In this video, we're going to use a seldom used operator in Excel called the intersection operator. If you've used Excel for more than a day, you've been introduced to some very basic operators like the through and the and operator. So like in the case of a sum function where we add a series of values, we'd write something like this. Let's take the sum of cells A2 through A4. So the colon represents the operator through. Same thing for February. I would like to get the sum of E2 through E4. Now, if I'd like to add January and February together, I can't write a formula that says A5 through E5 because I've got some numbers in between these two that shouldn't be part of this analysis. So in this case, I'm going to use a comma as an AND operator. So I'd like to get the sum of A5 and E5. So we've got the colon as the through operator and the comma as the AND operator. Now the way the intersection operator works is intersection is represented by a space. The intersection operator is used to find the intersecting value of two lists or ranges. If we wanted to find the sales of row 3 where it intersects column C, the value is 146. To write that as a formula, we would type equals and then select row 3, add a space, and then select column C. So the intersection of row 3 and column C is 146. Now the order of these references is not critical. I could just as easily have said what is at the intersection of column C and row 3 and I would return the same value. Something a little more useful, I have a list of regions and a list of months and I would like to get the sales value for a specific region in a specific month. Well I'd like to be able to write something like what is the sales for Southern in March? But I don't want to have to remember all the cell addresses for all the regions and all the cell addresses for all the months. So let's give these rows and columns of sales names. This will let us use another very neat trick in Excel and often underutilized, where I can highlight all of the data and then go to the formulas tab and then use this feature called create from selection. Create from selection wants to know where I'm deriving my names from. So since I want to use the region names on the left and the month names at the top, I'll select top row and left column. And when I hit OK, I now have a list of all of the months and all of the regions. Selecting Southern would select the Southern row, whereas selecting March would select the March column. Now I can write a formula like equals Southern space March, and I get the value 25,000, which is the intersection of Southern and March. I could also have written something like equals February space Northern, and now I have the intersection of February and Northern. Now to make this super useful, let's give the user the ability to select their region and select their month from drop-down menus. I've used data validation to create a data validation list that will give me the list of regions and the list of months. I'd like the user to be able to come in and pick something like Northern and then a month like May and get the sales for Northern in May. So we'll write the formula equals and we'll take the contents of B10 at the intersection of B11. And notice we get an error. Because if you think about it, we're trying to get the intersection of B10 and B11. Those two locations do not intersect with one another, so an answer can't be derived. So what we need to do is we need to tell Excel, don't actually use B10 and B11, use the words that are in B10 and B11. So we're going to use another very underutilized function in Excel, called indirect. What indirect does is it says, don't actually take the reference I'm giving you, but look inside that location and use what's in there instead. So we would like to take what's inside B10 and find it at the intersection of what's inside B11. And now I can see the result of Northern and May. For me, indirect almost seems like it should be named redirect. Now there are a couple caveats to using the create from selection tool to create those named ranges. First off, if your heading names are numbers like years, named ranges can't start with a number. So if I use the create from selection tool on a year, it's going to preface that year with an underscore. Named ranges can have numbers in them, it's just that the first character can't be a number. The second caveat is that your named range can't resemble an existing cell address. So if I have a named range like fiscal year 2023, there is actually a cell location on the Excel grid called FY2023. So I can't use that as a named range. So the create from selection tool will actually append an underscore to the end of that. 
So go out and practice this and have fun using the intersection operator. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.